December 2nd, 2023. If it's 7 o'clock on Saturday morning, it's time for This Week in Waukesha. I'm your host, the unsinkable Don Brown, coming to you live and local from the office of former Alderman Don Paul Brown, also known as the Walk Radio Studios here in the old NAMI building at 217 Wisconsin Avenue, right around the corner from Theodore Yalman's Park, where we are proud to honor our suffragette heritage in the Shaw. And I am joined by uh, producer Greg Bach filling in for Anya, who's a little under the weather this morning. We, we wish her well. And uh, Greg, glad to have you here. Greg is a Waukesha native and resident, so really glad to have his his knowledge and experience here on the board. How are you doing, Greg? I'm doing well. How about yourself, Don? Very well. Really glad. It's an honor to be working with you. I know you don't think that way, but I, I certainly <laughs> do. And All you, right. Thanks, man. Happy Saturday. You'll hear Greg throughout the civic media stratosphere, uh, the support he provides for As Goes Wisconsin and for uh, Up North News with Pat Kreitlow. And um, again, it's it's great to have him here. And uh, I want to say right away, don't forget today is the cookie walk at Waukesha South. Uh, cafeteria for the Black Shirt Marching Band. And I say this now because it starts soon. I think it starts around 9. But you should get there ASAP as they have sold out early in years past. Uh, Santa will be there as well. So be sure to uh, bring them along and to get there. Uh, come early, come often, as they say. And then, speaking of South, our first guest this morning is Lee Montez, a lifelong resident just like Greg of our university city and a graduate of Waukesha South High School who has served his alma mater for, uh, is it over 25 years as an assistant basketball coach? Um, it's been 20 years. 20 years, okay. And was recently named head coach after the resignation of uh, Bo Richter just a few weeks, a few months back. And uh, welcome, Coach uh Montez, uh, he is also joined by two of his senior captains, uh, Brighton Staub and Evan Stout. Uh, third senior captain, Charlie Morose, was unable to attend, but uh, he is expected to practice at eight, right? I believe so. Sounds great. We are grateful that all three of you could be here after um, suffering a, a tough 72-46 loss to Kettle Moraine uh, in the conference opener last night. And then you have practice at eight uh, at Whittier. And why is it at Whittier again? Um, South is having... A wrestling tournament today over so the field house. Is over 20 used. high schools, yeah. A lot of kids. Their own version of WrestleMania. So uh, that's great that Whittier is available to you guys. And, uh, hey, we're taking your calls this morning, too, 844-967-2789. And you can also text us at that number, too. So and I encourage you. I still got a lot of texts on my phone as you hear my phone blowing up already. So, um, so, Coach Montez, and you played sports at Waukesha South when you were there. Class of 94, is that correct? Correct. Sounds great. And uh, what sports did you play when you were in high school? I just played baseball when I was at South. but uh, Really? Um, I did. I was in the basketball program as the manager. Okay. Back then, I knew I wanted to coach basketball, so I started early. That's great. Was it your dream to come back to your alma mater and be head coach? It was a dream to be a head coach. Um, just to have the opportunity to do it at South makes it even better. Sure, sure. That's true. And, you know, usually when, um, and not, nothing against uh, Coach, Coach Richter, your predecessor, but usually, you know, when a coach decides it's time to step down, it's you usually have the benefit of time. Uh, the school does, you know, hire a new coach, and then that new coach has the benefit of a few months, at the very least, to, to build the program and to start working on things. And, um, what have you done to kind of, because you're kind of at a, it's fair to say you're kind of at a disadvantage knowing that um, the announcement came, I think, like in September. Yeah, we got a late start. And so trying to get bus schedule and everything lined up. Sure, talk to the mic more. And then, yeah. uh, you know, not only put a plan together with players and sure. a staff and stuff like that. Sure. And how, uh, uh, how much of a resource have your senior captains been for you in terms of uh, building the program up? They've been they've been really good. They've been great leaders so far. I couldn't ask anything more of them. So I've been very happy and pleased with their efforts so sure. far. So so in addition to I guess you could say you know a late start, you also had one ret really one returning regular starter from last year's team. You lost two All State guards, and so really kind of starting behind the eight ball, if you will. Uh, what has been your plan to to 
to kind of move forward, to move the needle, if you will? It's, it's a slow process here. Um, I think the kids are trying to feel me out. I'm trying to figure out what's our best option right now and sure. our best route to be successful this year. Sure. So, and uh, your black shirts are uh, one and two. Had a very impressive opening win last Friday against uh, Pulaski. Uh, had a tough loss on Tuesday to New Berlin West, where you're you're actually leading at halftime. And New Berlin West just uh, they opened up a new gear in the, the second half, and almost like kind of didn't look back. But uh, and then of course you know Kettle Moraine last night. Correct. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's going to be a, a slow process, and we're all trying to learn different roles and you know we'll get there sounds great yeah what would you like um i mean obviously you, you coached with coach richter for many years and i believe his predecessor and um one thing i noticed right away it's different is that you've gone pretty deep into your bench you know a lot of guys are getting some time a lot of younger players too whereas like coach richter would maybe go seven at the most sometimes eight yeah um i think we have enough guys that can compete and, you know, if it's not their night, you know, sure, we have options. Um, sure. So I don't know if it's going to be like that the whole year. Right. But as of right now, that's that's how we're going. Sure, sure. And I know with um, with our seniors, Brighton and Evan here, this is your first, um, I mean, it's not your first rodeo with Coach Montez because you've worked with him before when he was an assistant coach. Um, how do you feel the adjustments, Ben? First you, Brighton. Get, get right up there on the mic, my man. Uh, I think probably offense minded we're so much we're just so much better and like he's a he knows his stuff so it's the uh, stats strategic wise we all rely on him and that's I think a big part of how we're playing this season. Sounds good. How about you, Evan? Uh, I don't feel like it's a huge adjust adjustment just because we've been with Coach Montes for all four years. We've known him. It's just like a it was a good thing that he was our head coach just because I feel like everybody can rely on him and just trust him already without having to get a new offense set in. We have some new stuff, but everybody's kind of adjusting really well. Sounds good. Yeah. And also again, with it, it's your first role as a head coach, but not your first rodeo with the South basketball program. And it, it's important to mention that uh, I guess it's th- uh, two seasons ago, South won the classic eight after losing uh, 60 straight conference games in, in previous seasons. And we're one game away from going to state. And then that year, Coach Montez was named uh, Classic Eight Assistant Coach of the Year, which it's a big honor, in my opinion. Yeah, and you know, it just wasn't about me. Um, we had some some great kids, some really good talent, and you know, we just we figured it out and put it all together. I sure, was just happy to be a part of yeah. it. Well, one thing that uh, one aspect of the the program's big turnaround that got a lot of attention in the news was that. Uh, the team was using a sports psychologist. Is is um, is that is the? Do you still have that in your your arsenal of uh, of tools? Well, we used Doctor Matt um, those years. Um, unfortunately, now Doctor Matt has moved to, I believe, Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, really? Okay. Um, so, I have been looking for a you know, someone. Yeah, a replacement okay. to help us. So, so you hear that, Greg? If you know any good sports psychologist, uh, Waukesha South has an opening. I can just I can talk to them if they want. You know what's up? You know, yeah. <laughs> shoot the ball. I got you. Greg would be great. I'd be amazing. He would. So Greg's a CMH uh, grad, but um, I think has some uh, affinity for South as well. Being a South, uh, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I, I love I love all the Waukesha kids. They're all wonderful. Yep. I'm, I'm too old to know any of them now, and I sleep a lot, so I wish them good luck. Love it. I love it. So, uh, Coach Montez, is there a college basketball coach that you would consider a role model or someone you look up to or maybe pattern yourself after? I don't think that there's, like, one coach that I want to pattern myself Mm -hmm. after. Um, I do admire, like, some aspects of each coach and you try to take a little bit from them and implement it in your program. So sure. Sure. And what about, um, is there a brand you'd like to establish that's like the Montez brand or signature on the South program? 
I, I don't think so. Um, I want us to be really good at fundamentals. I want us to play. I want us to compete every day, just not during games. I want us to compete at practice and just, and just keep working hard. Sure. I like that. I like that. What about in terms of your experience at high school? Like what, um, I said, I know you had the, you, you got to work with coach Richter for many years. Were there other coaches that you had the pleasure of working with that you, you learned some things from? Yeah. Um, well I started coaching, um, at Waukesha West with Dave Schultz and then Todd Pizzora, um, after Dave. And then, um, when it came to South, it was Billy Swartz and, and then Bo Richter. Sure. But I've had, I've been coached by, you know, Bill Swartz senior, um, Mark Christensen. Sure. So I've had some hall of fame coaches that I've coached under and worked for. So that's great. And I'm glad you mentioned Billy Schwartz because on December 16th, Billy Schwartz and his younger brother, Julian are my guests. And I believe is December 19th is uh, Julian Schwartz night. Is that the date we set aside? I think it is. I think it's a Tuesday night. Yep. Um, we host West. So neat. So and Billy's been on the show before he's the varsity soccer coach and done a terrific job there. And uh, Julian, I believe it was class of 99 is considered perhaps the greatest basketball player in South history or one of them for sure. And, and was on that Wisconsin final four team, finished his career at Cornell and then has had a really uh, promising uh, collegiate uh, coaching career, uh, having been at Georgia tech, but uh, more on that. Um, when we come back from these important messages, um, going to talk to our captains, Brighton and Evan a little bit more, as well as learn more about uh, first year head coach, Lee Montez. And, um, don't forget, Mayor Sean Riley is my guest in the next segment here. So lots to unpack here on this beautiful morning in the Shaw as the holiday season begins. Do not go away. Down Georgia Street Arcade where the poor children play Gathering up charity to help them make their day for me, I was one stay your age. Once I was young, but I know I had my family to fall back on. Give it up. <laughs> hey, we're back. This is me, Walker Shaw. I'm your host, Don Brown. And- you're listening to If I Should Fall From Grace with God by the Pogues. One of Evan's favorite songs when he was a little boy. Evan Stout, by the way, uh, senior captain, is also my son, full disclosure. And uh, Evan used to call that song Go Boys because that's uh, mentioned in the chorus line, so we still refer to that. But um, you'll be hearing a lot of Pogues on my show this morning, maybe throughout the holiday season after um, uh, it was announced on um, Thursday that uh, Shane McGowan, the front man and, and uh, musical genius of the Pogues had passed away and um, still dealing with it. It's very much like a death in the family and um, his music had a huge impact on, on me and, and uh, a lot of other uh, Irish Americans and, and just, you know, lovers of, uh, of, of music, especially combining traditional Irish music with modern rock and even new wave and kind of punk rock that, that Shane McGowan was part of. So, um, very much, uh, very much alive in my heart here. But um, I'm, I'm also, I'm here with again. I mentioned the captains of the basketball team, Evan Stout, and um, Brighton Stab. Charlie Morose cannot be with us, and of course, head coach uh, Lee Montez. And um, wanted to talk to the captains here for a little bit. Um, what, um, what's the role you guys have in, in helping with, uh, with running the practices or again, being, being senior leaders? What, uh, what do you perceive your roles to be? Talking to the mic gentlemen. Uh, it's just kind of an easier role just because we've known these guys for so long, like just playing with Brighton and Charlie for so long since seventh grade and just knowing like guys like Giovanni Pereira and say so wall, just knowing those guys, it's kind of easy to, run around practice because it's really competitive, but it's really nice to know that like at the end of the day, we're all family. And then, so it's really good to just get after it in practice. Just, we get on everybody, but everybody knows it's just all love from everybody. So 
just making sure practices stay competitive, stay on task, and everything like that. Sounds good. How about you, Brighton? But how do you, what do you perceive your role to be as a senior captain? Uh, I think my role is just to keep everybody's heads up, keep, try and keep like a good attitude during practice, during games. When something doesn't go right, I'm there to pick someone up, help, give advice, and that's all. Sounds good. And um, what was I going to say? Yeah. And, you know, again, we're, we're, we're bummed that we're missing Charlie. And we know Evan's committing to uh, UW-Eau Claire for football and, and – uh, Brighton is uh, committed, or at least they both have signed letters of intent, and Brighton has signed his with uh, Carroll University for baseball. And uh, and Evan's a three-sport a- athlete. Uh, Brighton's a two-sport athlete. How does uh, – do you, do you view your work in each sport as good cross-training? Yeah, I feel like every sport just kind of goes into each other. Um basketball is for sure like a huge uh conditioning point i feel like i have to like that's a sport that i know going into it that i'm gonna probably be the most sore in my legs everything like that um everything just goes into each other because everything that you do just athletically has to go into every sport i feel like sounds good how about you brighton um being a pitcher and with all the basketball conditioning that's really gonna help come spring season and it just helps with my legs create my legs stronger or when I do have to pitch, and it's like a, it's like legs day for four months straight. Neat, neat. So now back to Coach Montez. You know, one of the highlights uh, of last night's uh, game was a gigantic presence of uh, young fans, very small fans in black shirt uniforms, and it was uh, it was youth night, and it was really neat to see the varsity team welcoming the different youth teams out before the game, and then there was a great uh, great halftime performance. <laughs> it was like a rock concert, cheering on the young kids and. That's got to make you feel pretty encouraged. No one, um, and I know Coach Richter has now moved, kind of devoted his efforts towards developing the youth program. How's, how's that make you feel, knowing that uh, you got a lot of talent to look forward to, uh, to reviewing in the future, to developing, I should say? It's exciting. Um, you know, our youth program is our future um, going forward. So we want to donate and put as much time as we can into our youth and Hopefully they can develop and, you know, become great black shirts in the future. Sure. Now there's like, a, I saw there was like the, the halftime game, I believe was second grade against third grade. And, Correct. Yeah. And, and how do you develop those guys when a lot of them, I think, you know, can't even get the ball over the basket with the kind of the strength they have at that. Right. Age. Or um, maybe they can, but. They got to get in close and, uh, but yeah, it's more of, you know, teaching jump stops there and passing and, you know, correct form, you know, once they get old enough and they get taller and they get stronger, you know, they'll be able to get the ball up over the, Neat. over the rim. Sure. Are, are you teaching them the mic and drills? <laughs> I assume we will get there at some yeah. point. So I think at second and third grade, it's probably trying to keep their attention. Sure. That was my more one, than anything. That was my one grievance about the Kettle Moraine team is they, they did a great job of scoring, but you had guys scoring from the left side using the right hand, like on layups and whatnot. And I'm like, is, they're not they're not doing their mic controls over there. Uh, I I can't speak for you yeah. know Coach Rickert and sure. what they do. And he's over a first there. year coach too, so that had to be interesting, right? He's a first year head coach at KM. He's um he's coached before at I think St. John's Military Academy. Okay, sure is where he where he started so sounds great well in the three minutes we have for the next break i want to switch gears uh towards the carol minute and uh we're staying on basketball though the pioneer women's basketball team has had a great week they um won their second game in a row on wednesday night beating rivals north central 92 to 62 uh that was their conference uh opener uh at van mail field house Sophomore Natalie Grisius led all Pios with 18 points, followed by 15 points from sophomore Emily Wisner and 14 points from junior Olivia Rangel. Pios moved to 5-2, and two, and we broadcasted last Saturday's victory at Van Mail uh, over Ripon College 69-54 when Rangel scored 28 points and Grisius netted 13. And both the men's and women's teams play a doubleheader today at CCIW opponent Illinois Wesleyan. And then we'll be broadcasting next week's game, a uh, doubleheader, when the Pio men's and women's teams play at 2 and 4.15 uh, on the 9th. So 
And then also on the ninth, my guess is um, Gina Nordrum, a family and consumer ed teacher at uh, Waxha Salt, who heads the SALT program. What's SALT? It's not strategic arms and limitations uh, treaty like for any of us Cold War uh, people that remember. It's student athlete leadership training. And she'll also be bringing a couple students as Coach Montez here. So be sure to tune into that. So uh, in the minute we have before the next break, too, um, what's, what's your practice ritual like on Saturdays? Well, we just, we're just trying to get better every day. Um, so coach Hurtado and I, um, kind of came up with a plan for, for today. And, you know, we're going to go out and work hard today and sounds good. Try to get better. A lot of running. No, I, I'm not a firm believer in, you know, punishment. You know, we didn't play well last night at times, but sure. you know, running's not going to solve anything. Sure. Sure. Yeah. I didn't mean in terms of punishment, but just conditioning. That there's probably probably a decent amount of it in your routine, I'd imagine. I think we work hard enough in drills. Um, yeah, we'll condition maybe a couple times a week, but sounds you know. good. Good. After these important messages, more with uh, Coach Montez and Captains Brighton Stab Evan Stout uh, before they head over to their eight o'clock practice as this week in walk shot continues. Do not go away. favorite songs uh, well they're all like my favorite songs but uh, again remembering Shane McGowan this uh, sad week uh, hey also too December 2nd is actually it's also the fourth anniversary of um, we had some school shooting threats at South and at North that uh, were um, thwarted thank thank God and um, it's amazing it's become a memory like a, like a long time ago especially after what we had gone through with the the Christmas parade. Uh, but, uh, there are other, you know, we're much more fortunate than other schools like, like Sandy hook. I know that an- anniversary is coming up and then uh, centennial in Denver where my niece was a sophomore when all that went down. Um, you know, we, we keep those, um, those, those families, those children, those survivors in our heart. Um, again, Sandy hook, we know there were several young children, young children that were killed. And then also at, uh, centennial i know there was at least one and um so and thank god for our student resource officer program it's always great when you see uh, officer josh there at the basketball games and uh, i think he had a couple assistants with him too and so for a big crowd like that it, it certainly is comforting and, and knowing the relationships these officers have with the young people with the students is incredible it is great um and i know um, officer josh is getting close to his tenure. Um, he's only got a couple more weeks at South and then we will oh, no. have a new SRO. So, Oh, wow. I didn't know that. So we'll have to get him on the show, but coach Montez in this age of like youth sports overkill, I mean, we're using it's $17 billion industry now. And a lot of rec programs have been gone by the ways, you know, where that, that could, a lot of families could afford to play have gone by the wayside of these really expensive club sports. And, uh, you have a lot of dad coaches and as a new coach, how do you rise above the politics and the pressures that come from, uh, the parent base? You know, I'm still trying to learn that. Um, if, you know, I've, I've only had the job here for, you know, less than two months. So, um, my focus has been, you know, trying to get the varsity ready, the high school program ready. Sure. Um, so I haven't had much to do with that yet. Yeah. Um, and I'm kind of hoping that, you know, we give each kid an equal opportunity and, you sure. know, they want to be at South and, you know, make that, make their youth, make our youth program a memorable experience. So they, sure. 
they want to be at South and continue That's great. at South. There's a, there's a famous saying from legendary college football coach Duffy Doherty from my alma mater, Michigan State. The, the alumni are with you, winner tie. And it sounded like today you could say the parents are with you, winner tie. And as long as my kid gets the most playing time, you know, do you have a process for how you deal with some of those, uh, you know, parental pressures? Uh, you know, we've, we talked a little bit about that in our parent meeting and, you know, it's not going to be easy. Um, and I've tried to teach my kids at home that, you know, life isn't fair. You can be really, really good, but mm -hmm. there might be someone ahead of you. And sure. It's always going to be someone better than you. Correct. And that's how, you know, that that's how life's going to go. And, you know, I think the sooner kids learn that, sure. the better off they're going to be in life. Sure. How do you, how do you like, steer the focus towards building a team concept, you know, away from that, uh, again, that maybe that parental pressure, maybe some of these young athletes with stars in their eyes. Uh, you know, I've, I've leaned on, you know, the captains here, um, you know, like you said, Charlie's not here, but Evan and Brighton. And I've kind of like, I told them when we met that, you know, this is their team, you know, and, you know, I'm just, just a part of it. I'll kind of push them and steer them in the right direction, but this is their team. And, you know, you guys got to be a part of dealing with, you know, the ups and downs of a season and being, being leaders and captains. That's part of your role. And keeping that even emotional temperament then. Correct. That's good. As well as making, it's gotta be fun too. Yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying it. I'm tired, you know. I don't get a lot of sleep and but uh, you know, this is what I always wanted to do is be a head coach. So, you know, here you go. This is what it takes. So Sure, sure. Absolutely. What do you like to do when you're not coaching and thinking basketball? Um my family's a big baseball family. Um yeah. I grew up playing baseball. My brother's the head coach at Waukesha West. That's right. We're and talking about that. You guys still talk to each other, though, right? We do. <laughs> we do. Um, but my kids play baseball. Um, they play travel ball. So we're, in the summer, we're, we're traveling a lot. <laughs> and, you know, as a family, we enjoy going to different major league ballparks. Um, we try to catch the Brewers when when we're like out of town and, you know, at a different park, but. Oh, neat. But yeah, we'll just, sometimes we'll just go to a game just cause we're in town. So. Sure. That's great. What, what major league parks have you been to already? Um, so we've been, my wife and I have been to San Francisco. The boys have not. Um, but as a family, we've been to sure. Coors Field in Denver We've been to um, Target Field in Minnesota. We've been sorry about that. Both Chicago, um, White Sox, and Wrigley. Obviously, American Family Field, Cleveland, Something. Cincinnati, neat, neat. Pittsburgh, Boston. Oh. Sorry for the hiccup. Uh, Mayor Sean Riley just entered the the building, and uh, so I'm, I'm glad that he gets to meet Coach Montez and uh, uh, our future leaders here, Brighton and Evan. Uh, yeah. Sean will be, excuse me, Mayor Riley will be, um, our guest in the, the second segment. I can call him Sean cause we're friends and, uh, I was on the council and, uh, <laughs> we've called each other worse things right. than that, but oh, we've, he's I've met Mayor Riley before, um, after I think it was two years ago. You got the proclamation. Yeah. We got the so, proclamation. So we yeah. all got to meet him and there was a very proactive alderman for the first district that made that happen. So I was really, I'm really glad that that, yeah, uh, we'll that's to meet that we, guy someday. That's it. Yeah. So, but it's neat because, um, the mock trial team has gotten two proclamations. So, and I think some other great clubs and I, I know I'm working on one for the, the fusion volleyball team, uh, has had an amazing year. So, but, uh, really glad to have uh, mayor Riley on deck. So we might be, be able to get him on sooner since uh, you guys have a practice to get to, but, uh, um, We've got about, I think, what, about five minutes, Greg, before the next break? Let's see here. Let's see. Uh -huh. we'll get, oh, we got about so, seven minutes. Oh, we got plenty of time. got plenty of time. time. Great. All right. So, I know how to tell yeah. time. I can do it. Yeah. I read things. Hey, we're taking your calls here, 844-967-2789, or you can text uh, the messages in for, for Coach uh, Montez. And uh, 
you know, I think there's a lot of people that might still be sleeping in because, you know, we actually went to a um, Christmas party after the game. Uh, one of our softball families has um, a Christmas party in honor of, um, they, they have a, um, a sister that had passed away from cancer um, as, as a younger uh, child. And on her birthday every year, they, they do like a gift wrapping uh, kind of party. It's really neat. And uh, so it's really um, fun to be a part of that. And so, but I didn't stay out too late. I had uh, the family has a uh, um, Swedish roots and they make this wonderful uh, glock, great holiday punch uh, for you grownups. That is, so you guys have to wait a couple of years, Evan and Brighton. So, but uh, yeah, so, so Tuesday you have East Troy, a non-conference opponent. And then uh, Friday you'll be at North uh, Crosstown Rivals, where I believe, I think you guys have won like maybe eight straight games against North. So any any plans of attack or expectations or or scouting or um, I haven't. I've put some film up on our uh, our huddle account. Um, I haven't really gotten too far to North yet, but. Uh, yeah, no pressure. You know, if if we, I can't remember how many we have in a row, but um, we're we're just hoping and looking to add one more to it. So, sure, sure, sounds good. And then, um, I forget, how many players do you have in the varsity lineup right now? Um, we we have full set. We have uh, fifteen guys right now. So that's a nice size. It is. Um, you know, with injuries and and other things that you can't see. Sure. You know, it's always nice to have more at the beginning. And yeah. Then, yep. You know, we did have a, a uh, Morgan Schwartz was injured in the New Berlin West game. Um, talked to his dad, Billy, and, you know, fortunately it's not a fracture, um, but there will be a process for his, his recovery. And yeah, so. we're, we're hoping, um, I was at the hospital with Morgan and Billy and it, we saw the x-ray doctor came in and said it was negative. And so we're just hoping it's a sprain and he'll be back hopefully, you know, Christmas time. So sounds great. And what, um, I know you get a lot of support from Caitlin Weber and, um, the children's Wisconsin team that supports South and what, what are some measures that you do to, um, to maybe to do your best to avoid injuries as part of your routine? Yeah, I think I kind of do let Caitlin, you know, kind of be the eyes and ears. You know, she hears the kids coming in, compl- you know, saying, you know, this is hurting, this is hurting. And, you know, I always value her opinion when it comes to um, the kids. So, okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Now, going back to Evan and Brighton here, because like I said, you guys are, are I know you. Coach Montez being a huge baseball fan and you guys both playing baseball, uh, what do you do to stay focused on basketball? Like year round or just during the just season? Just right now during the season. Uh, during the season, it's kind of easy. You're uh, there after school every single day, just kind of focused on basketball. Uh, I'd say one thing is just kind of the sticking with your teammates the entire time. Like those are your teammates right now. I feel like I always just get – really close to my teammates during the season and everything like that. We're always close outside like the season, but definitely during the season, you got to get close with your teammates. You got to stay in and stay focused. So it's kind of a good way just with people. Sounds good. And how about you, Brighton talking to the bike now real close, pretend like you're talking to your catcher during a timeout here. He's coming to the mound. You're having a pretty, um, obviously just being close with teammates, um, watching film a lot. That's always a key way. I keep like stay on basketball. And then obviously just putting in work outside of practice, like on my on my days off, just getting better at the sport in the season. Sounds great. So, and, you know, I played on some teams and, and things can get chippy in practice sometimes even during games. Like, how do you guys best communicate? Say you have a grievance against coach or a grievance against another teammate. How, how do you guys, um, you know, best handle that? Uh, between teammates, it's pretty easy. We just all know, leave it on the court. Something happens, just leave it there. Um I'd say we have that sometimes just because of how competitive practices are. Uh, so you're always going to have that. You want that just because it's more competitive. You want people to want it. So I feel like it's really good. Uh, stuff with coaches, you you know how to handle that. You just talk to the coach yourself. Coach Montez is really good at uh, 
just being straight up with you right when you go to him. So that's uh, one of the best parts about Coach Montez and having him here. So I feel like it's pretty easy that way. Sounds great. So we have two minutes, and then we got to let you guys get to practice. What is it you want um, Waukesha to know about the South team and the Lee Montez era that we haven't talked about yet? Uh, I think it's more of about the kids and the program. Um, I just, I want, you know, like the future black shirts to know that, you know, we're going to work hard and, um, we're looking forward to the day you can put on the South Jersey and, and just, you know, let's have a great time and build memories as we go. Sounds great. How about you guys? Anything real quick for, uh, for Shaw nation to know about the black shirt hoops team? This year, we are a younger team, and with us seniors, captains, Evan, Charlie, me, we are the stepping stones to the youth, and we want to make it known that when they're up at this level, they can do what we can do. So you said you're raising the bar. That's great. So, well, terrific. So um, when we come back after these important messages, Mayor Sean Rai, uh, who's come here early, will be stepping in, taking over for, for Coach Lee Montez and for Bright and Stab and Evan Stout. I'm really glad you three could join us. Uh, have a great practice this morning. Best of luck with the rest of the season. And uh, you're always welcome back here on This Week in Waukesha. And uh, don't forget my guest next week is uh, Gina Nordrum and the St- Student Ath- Athlete Leadership uh, Training Program. So more to come as Mayor Sean Riley joins us next here on This Week in Waukesha. Do not go away. Hey, we're back this week in Waukesha. I'm your host, Don Brown, and that's right. You're going to hear a lot of Pogues this show and in uh, shows throughout the uh, the holidays here as we remember uh, fondly Shane McGowan, uh, one of my favorite musicians and uh, possibly a favorite musician of my next guest. It, our first Irish Catholic mayor in Waukesha history, is that correct, or am I off? Uh, did I miss the vote on that? I have no idea. I think it is. So, but <laughs> well, Mayor Sean Riley, welcome. So, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, good morning. And are you a Shane McGowan and Pogues fan? I, I think you are. Yeah, I am. I wore my Guinness Guinness shirt. Uh, I saw him in 1999 in uh, the Chicago Speedway at the Guinness Fla. Oh, cool. Yeah. Was it the racetrack or the? Yeah, I think it was. The, well, no, was, it was oh, a no. park. Oh, race that's right. The year before it was at the old racetrack. 98. It was, it was 98 and 99. I'm not sure okay. which one I went to. Yeah. I went to one of them. Uh, yeah. Shane played at both. And was uh, Sinead O'Connor there, too? Uh, was that, it was Sinead I, O'Connor, John Lee Hooker, Tracy Chapman, Wilco with Billy Bragg. I think that's 98. That's um, the one I was at. Okay, I was the one. I believe I was the year after. The year after, it's at the racetrack. Like yeah, Shane new, McGowan. Shane McGowan yeah. And, and the they, Popes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like him, my, my memory of it, it may be a little fuzzy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. So, but uh, Mary, we're glad you're here early filling in so Coach Montez and the boys could uh, make the practice on time. And I'm glad you got to meet. Now, I'm also glad that he goes, Oh, yeah, I met, I met Mary Riley at uh, the proclamation that we put together when I was in the council. And that was for the Classic Eight uh, championship that uh, the basketball team had won a couple of years ago. Same year Coach Montez was named uh, coach Assistant of, Coach of the Year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yep. but, um, we got a big event tomorrow, the 60th annual Waukesha Christmas Parade. Are you Look, ready? I'm I'm ready. I got my uh, I know Santa hat. I saw that. Yeah. So, so we're it, not we're not we're not streaming, so we don't have the the video. But uh, we I think we got it for the picture anyway that we took with Coach Montez. Okay. Yeah. So and uh, I was wearing it last night at the tree lighting too. How, that's why I want to add. How was it? I missed the tree lighting because I was covering the basketball game. But uh, how did that go? It was nice. I mean, I was very worried about the weather to begin with, uh, but it turned out okay. It really turned out nice, yeah. yeah. I, was I, was, like, I was afraid of uh, solid rain. Instead, it was wet snow. I was working there in the afternoon, or at home, working at home, and I was up pretty early. In the end, the afternoon started raining. I'm like, oh, God, this is going to be terrible. I hope it's not like this for the parade. And then as I was driving to go get my gear for the basketball game, like the snow was coming. It was beautiful. It's like that's the kind of snowfall you want. 
Yeah, we had so the lights uh, work so much better when there's snow behind them too. Right. So we had a little bit of snow. Uh, it, the crowd was uh, not as big as last year, but a good sized crowd. Um, That's good. We did the caroling down Main Street and through nice. Fremont Alley and then uh, lit the lights on the riverfront. If you haven't gone by Friedman Alley yet, take a, take a drive by there at night. It looks yeah, really I, cool. I saw the signage during the day, and that, that looked pretty impressive. Yeah. So I'll have to get there at night. It's, 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 I was surprised when I saw it. I was like, sure. I wasn't, they had, yeah. um, this, it had been described to me, and I really didn't think, uh, you know, it's like, oh, sure. that'll be nice. Um, I was impressed. Sure. Yeah, and what was also impressive, too, was... Um, you were essentially the master of ceremonies when we had the um, the the anniversary, the second anniversary of the uh, the parade attack and the dedication of the new memorial, which looks fantastic there. And um, you you said something that was really profound to me that you was, you were really glad for this turnout because it meant so much for the families of the victims as well as a lot of the survivors. That it, it is a uh, very much a healing process that continues uh, to the present day. Yeah, um, you know, I mean, it's the community experienced a death uh, as, as almost the way where, um, you know, if, if you had a parent pass away or something like that, I come from a really big family. All of us reacted yeah. differently. Sure. Um, you know, some internalized their grief, some were, um, out with it. Uh, but it also is something that it, you know, it's, it's not like it ends. It, right. It kind of keeps on going. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that you're always sad. It means that, you know, it can kind of hit you from uh, right. a different direction. Sure. And, and years later, um, as a community, we, we were all traumatized. And right. so the healing for that takes time. Sure. Um, and people are going to do it differently. And, and they, Right. You know, and it meant a lot that uh, Governor Evener, Evers came to speak. And then Senator Tammy Baldwin, I believe our congressman was there as well. Yep. Congressman Fitzgerald was there also. So. Yeah. Um, you know, we didn't want to open it up to a, a whole, a, a bunch of speakers because right. uh, you, you want to have these things be timely. Um, yes. You don't want them to last an hour, you, yeah. you know, half an hour. And, and not necessarily, you know, highlight reels for the, the legislators or the political leaders, but some, you know, for the people that, um, you want this to be a really, still very kind of a serious, sober, special moment. Correct. And it, when the governor is there, um, as the, you know, he's. As a representative of the state of Wisconsin, right. I um, it was it was an easy choice for me to say sure. the governor gets to speak, um, yes. you know the, and then we'll have the people on the ground, um, yeah. our police chief, fire chief, yeah. chaplain, sure, um, and it, and I don't I'm sorry, but uh, okay. the the two ladies who spoke were yeah just, that was, that was beautiful Sherry Sparks and I forget the daughter's name tomorrow Jane Kulik's daughter yeah and so yeah those were it was very well spoken and uh, to share that pain too that that's still very real for them. Yeah, and they and they did such a great job. They really did, and I was also impressed. You know, Chief Thompson was on my show, I believe, the week before, and um, he was he did a great job. And then um, Fire Chief um, Steve he, Howard, yeah, I really liked what he had to say because he did he highlighted that it's still very difficult for a lot of people to come to downtown that witnessed all of that. Yeah, he said he struggled over and his he, speech, which which yeah. we all do to sure. to do that. You know, sure, absolutely. So, but. Um, but it's not, you know, in our planning, because we're doing the pre-parade broadcast at uh, 3 o'clock tomorrow, that um, in kind of the team meetings, like, let's not, you know, emphasize the tragedy so much. But at the same time, it's become a part of us. And then the idea of the parade is just, it's a sign of our resilience and um, an expression of the holiday spirit. And we continue to move forward while also keeping uh, victims and survivors uh, in our hearts. You know, who's a, a good example of that is the Dancing Grannies. Yes. You know, they... They kept on dancing, um, mm. and they were so impacted by the um, sure great tragedy. Yes, Mayor, I forgot. This is a, I have a special uh, producer this morning. My my regular producer is um, out sick, but Greg Bach is a fellow uh, CMH alumnus. Oh, nice! So Mayor what Sean year, Riley, Greg? Uh, Ninety six. Okay, um, so. I was a little before you. <laughs> 79 79 yeah. you, I looked it up actually you got there one year after coach Bill Young got there and he's still there he's and still that there. is yeah. ridiculous I uh, was in freshman football for a short period of time I didn't I didn't I, I they didn't cut me um but I had tendonitis in both ankles and coach Young was he's 
uh, his history and his uh, winning record is unbelievable. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, he was a really tough coach in the beginning years, but uh, I still respect him for good it. Good man. Good man. When we come back from the break, I've got a great story about Coach Young that the two of you will appreciate, as well as more about the big parade tomorrow and other holiday happenings with Mayor Sean Riley. When this week in Waukesha continues, do not go away. Stupid little fun, it's useless to fall, but a rusty tin cannon.